I don't think a lot of people know this, but the United States has been implementing Stephen Miller's dream policy at the border for two years now. And that policy is still in place and basically being kept in place by a crazy combination of rogue lawless judges, by Republican and right-wing demagoguery, and by some Democratic cowardice. It is a policy that has gone on far too long. It has to stop because the current situation is outrageous and untenable, and somehow it is flying under the radar. So, asylum law in the United States has evolved over the years, in part because we have learned from the mistakes of the past. Like in 1939, when the U.S. notoriously refused to allow hundreds of Jews fleeing Germany on the ship known as the St. Louis to enter the country, forcing them to return to Europe. More than 250 of those passengers were later murdered in the Holocaust. Now, federal law says immigrants not authorized to be in the U.S. US cannot be deported if they have a credible fear of violence in their home country. And over the past decade, asylum claims have gone up, particularly at the southern border, as endemic violence has grown in South America, particularly Central America. Right now, there are people from Ukraine who are trying to enter the United States from Mexico, fleeing the war there. Again, the idea here of asylum, and it's around the world, people show up at the border desperate for safety, and they basically throw themselves on the mercy of the country they land in. That's what asylum is. That's what's happening here in the U.S. Now, there was a huge surge of refugees from Central America in 2014 under Barack Obama. You might remember. It led to a complete right-wing meltdown. And then another huge surge happened again under Donald Trump, leading Trump and his top anti-immigrant advisor, Stephen Miller, to start, well, kidnapping children, essentially. But that produced an understandable backlash and was dropped, ultimately, and walked back. Now, you gotta understand, Stephen Miller's primary goal in life is just to limit the number of people coming to the U.S. as much as he can. It's, it's what he lives for. That is why Miller then helped implement a policy known as Remain in Mexico, the Trump administration started enforcing in 2019. Now, the major change in that policy was that even if asylum seekers passed this credible fear screening, right, that the, uh, they got interviewed by a, uh, an official who said, yeah, they, they're scared to go back, they have a credible fear, they were then sent back to Mexico to await their asylum hearing, a process that can take years and offers its own dangers, all kind of horror stories coming out of what those folks on the Mexican border are subjected to while they wait for their hearing. But that was not enough for Stephen Miller. The New York Times reported that since Trump entered office, Miller had, quote, repeatedly tried to use an obscure law designed to protect the nation from diseases overseas as a way to tighten the borders. That law is known as Title 42, and it enables the CDC to stop people from entering the country due to the threat of a communicable disease. Miller's problem was that Title 42 had never been used since there was no justification. And then the pandemic came along, then COVID. And before the first wave of COVID had peaked in this country, the Trump administration invoked Title 42 in March of 2020. The Associated Press reported Vice President Mike Pence directed the CDC to seal the borders, overruling the agency's scientists who said there was no evidence the action would slow the coronavirus. Stephen Miller, top aide to the President Donald Trump, who had been a vocal opponent of immigration, pushed for the expulsion order. That was a Stephen Miller was special. He was all over that, said Olivia Troy, a former top aide to Pence, who coordinated the White House Coronavirus Task Force. Now, the medical reason to enact Title 42 was really thin. And that's not why they did it. They did it because Stephen Miller had the weapon he needed to close the border. But Donald Trump and Stephen Miller have been gone for over a year. And both of those programs, Remain in Mexico and Title 42, are both still in effect as I speak to you tonight, despite being essentially right-wing anti-immigrant policies that effectively suspended the multi-decades tradition and international and domestic law and practice of asylum. They are in place, not because the Biden administration is like, oh, they're fine. The Biden administration has tried to revoke both of them and has been stopped by judges who tell them they do not have the legal authority to revoke these provisions even though Joe Biden is the president and courts have found that presidents have a lot of control over immigration, including right wing courts have found that in the past. Not only that, there is now a growing movement to extend Title 42, the so-called public health measure. 
Republicans really want it done. And this is even though, ask any Republican around the country, and they say the pandemic's over and they're cheering no masks on airplanes and dismissing vaccines and other health, public health measures saying we're done with COVID, done with COVID. How dare you talk about COVID back in school? Oh, except for the southern border. No, no, no. Now, obviously, the southern border where COVID obviously still exists and it's such a threat that we need to extend Title 42 in perpetuity. Give me a break. And some Democrats, like Senators Raphael Warnock and John Tester and Catherine Cortez Masto and Maggie Hassan, are saying they don't want to ditch for Title 42 either. None of them, of course, represent states along the southern border. And there's a political fear here. Again, not a crazy political fear. They're terrified of the optics. Lots of people showing up at the border. This demagoguery that was whipped up by Fox News that stoked the fear of a migrant invasion every single day for years. They're still they're running it constantly. It is now being wielded to fundamentally, it has suspended and now destroyed the structure of asylum as constituted in this country in the wake of the Holocaust. Now, if people really want to do that, okay, and I think there are people that do, then all these Democrats who are supporting Stephen Miller's Title 42 should just come out and say it. In fact, Congress can write a bill. Hey, we've moved on. Never again was a long time ago. The St. Louis was a long time ago. If people get sent back to their certain deaths, tough. But it is utter cowardice to hide behind this public health measure and some terrible right-wing judges to withdraw the U.S. from its asylum requirements and abandon this moral imperative to help those who need it most.